Have you ever wondered about the shape and size of viruses? Viruses are fascinating organisms, if we can consider them as such. They're at the boundary of what we define as living, lacking the ability to reproduce on their own. Yet, they have a significant influence on life as we know it. They're incredibly diverse, not only in their genetic makeup and the hosts they infect, but also in their physical attributes. This diversity is reflected in their size and shape. Some viruses are as tiny as 20 nanometers in diameter, while others can reach up to 1400 nanometers in length and 80 nanometers in diameter. We've even discovered giant viruses measuring up to 400 nanometers in diameter. Their structures also vary, generally falling into one of two categories, helical or icosahedral. But some viruses break the mold with complex structures that are neither helical nor icosahedral. Now let's delve into the fascinating world of virus structures. Firstly, we have the icosahedral structure, a predominant shape of animal viruses. This geometric marvel, the icosahedron, boasts 20 faces, each an equilateral triangle. Though they might appear spherical at first glance, closer inspection via electron microscopy reveals their true shape, an icosahedron. The icosahedral structure, also known as a cubical structure, is a common sight among the animal kingdom's viruses. Many animal icosahedral viruses are enveloped, meaning they have an outer layer that protects the virus and aids in its transmission. On the other hand, most plant viruses with this structure are naked, lacking that protective envelope. Let's delve a bit deeper into the icosahedron's construction. Each triangular face of the icosahedron is composed of at least three capsomers, protein subunits that combine to form the shell or capsid of the virus. At the very least, 60 capsomers can form an icosahedron structure, a tightly packed fortress for the virus's genome. Now, let's take a look at some examples of icosahedral viruses. The hepatitis B virus, for one, has an icosahedral structure. This virus, which can cause serious liver disease, is one of many that utilize the icosahedral structure's benefits. Other examples include the dengue virus, parvovirus, rhinovirus, human papilloma virus, and herpes virus. Each of these viruses, despite their differences in terms of the diseases they cause, share a common feature, the icosahedral structure. Icosahedrons, with their 20 equilateral triangular faces, are a testament to nature's love for geometry. This structure offers a balance between stability and efficiency, allowing viruses to protect and house their genetic material while minimizing the number of different proteins they need to encode. This makes the icosahedron a popular choice among viruses. Icosahedral viruses such as the hepatitis B virus and the herpes virus are intriguing in their geometric precision. This precision, coupled with the structure's efficiency and stability, makes the icosahedron a fascinating subject of study. As we delve deeper into the world of virology, understanding these structures can provide valuable insights into how viruses function and how we can combat them. Moving on to the helical structure, a spiral shape that winds cylindrically around a central axis. This structure is reminiscent of a tightly wound coil or spring. In helical viruses, the viral genome, the complete set of genes contained in the virus, is encapsulated within this coiling structure, forming what we call the nucleocapsid. The helical structure is elongated, much like a tube or rod. The formation of this structure is dependent on the length of the viral genome. The longer the genome, the longer the helical structure. The capsid, the outer protein shell of a virus, follows the same helical pattern. The capsid proteins wind around the viral genome, mirroring its helical shape. Interestingly, helical viruses typically have shorter genomes. This is because they only require one type of capsoma the subunit of the capsid. This in turn means that only one type of gene is needed to code for the capsid. Helical viruses are also energy efficient. They require less free energy to assemble the capsid than their icosahedral or complex counterparts. This makes them quite fascinating from a biological perspective. Most of the well-defined helical viruses are plant viruses and the majority of these are naked, meaning they lack an envelope. However, enveloped helical viruses are primarily found in animals. Now, let's delve into some examples of helical viruses. The tobacco mosaic virus is a well-known example, being one of the first viruses to be discovered. It's a plant virus that causes a mosaic pattern on tobacco leaves. 
In the realm of human diseases, influenza virus, measles virus, mumps virus, and rabies virus all have helical structures. Perhaps one of the most infamous helical viruses is the Ebola virus, which has been the cause of several deadly outbreaks in human history. So, from the everyday flu to the deadly Ebola, helical viruses play a significant role in our world. They showcase a unique form of symmetry in nature, and their study continues to shed light on the intricacies of viral formation and behavior. Helical viruses, such as the influenza virus and the Ebola virus, showcase a unique form of symmetry in nature. Lastly, we have viruses that don't quite fit the mold, those with complex structures. While most viruses opt for the simplicity of the helical or icosahedral form, a select few choose a path less traveled, showcasing unique architectures that don't fall into either category. These intriguing figures are known as complex viruses. Now, the complex viral structure isn't governed by a single rulebook. These viruses can present themselves in a myriad of forms, each more fascinating than the last. For instance, take the pox viruses. Their brick-shaped, enveloped viruses are quite the sight, with a dumbbell-shaped capsid encased by two lateral bodies. The function of these bodies? Well, that's still a mystery worth solving. Then we have the bacteriophages, a class of viruses that have a knack for breaking the mold. They feature icosahedral heads, much like their more common counterparts. But that's where the similarities end. These heads are connected to cylindrical tail sheaths, forming a structure that's nothing short of complex. But the complexity doesn't stop there. Gemini viruses take it a step further, boasting not one, but two icosahedral heads connected to each other. It's a display of structural complexity that truly sets these viruses apart. Complex viruses such as bacteriophages and pox viruses remind us of the diversity and complexity of life. In summary, viruses come in a variety of shapes and sizes, each with its unique characteristics. From the minuscule 20 nanometer viruses to the colossal 1400 nanometer ones and the unique geometrical forms such as the icosahedral and helical structures, they are truly a marvel of nature. Even more fascinating are the complex viruses, defying standard classification. This fluidity and diversity in part explain the adaptability of viruses. The next time you think of a virus, remember there is more to it than meets the eye.